Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crossing Borders. I'm Mike Ginn. That's Extremo Alex Soto. Back again to talk about all the action south of the border down in Mexico. Of course, we got two cars to talk about this time because we're fresh off Luke's Fight League 33. So we'll give you our reaction to that. Got a new champion off of that card. And then we got Luke's Fight League 34 coming up in just a couple weeks, which Alex is going to be uh, going down for work to Cancun. Uh to talk about that card. So we'll talk about all that coming up today. Of course, head over to fightersfirst.shop. Get all the latest apparel. Let our apparel be a part of your story. You can get the Extremo collection. You can get the show collection. Of course, you see uh, Alex's latest shirt right below him uh, on the screen. And, of course, everything down in the description, fightersfirst.shop. And if you've been paying attention, we also got the Tarzan collection, uh, Anwar Alberto, uh, Luke's Fight League fighter on the shop as well. So check out all that cool stuff. Alex, how are you feeling today, buddy? Hey, doing fantastic. I'm really happy to be uh, back at the show again. We haven't, we haven't, you know, we've been kind of taking a long hiatus, uh, but uh, it feels really good to be coming back and talking about Luke's Fight League and all the latest stuff that's happening in Latin America, man. Schedules kind of felt weird because the, the day we were supposed to record is the day after July 4th. And, you know, Alex is not... Alex was in vacation mode. Let's just put it like yeah. that. I'll, I'm not going to throw him under the bus. <laughs> I was Alex out, man. Was ready to work. Alex was, you know, enjoying his time. So, so be it. Finally got a uh, Alex, you're coming back. Uh, you just were down in Puebla for Luke's Fight League 33. Of course, Jose Rara and uh, Fido Rubio for the uh, vacant at the time Bantamweight title. Had Francisco Patron and Luis Moraz, uh, Jaguar Bravo and Jesus Sealer. Uh, of course, Fernanda Munoz doing her thing and uh, Raul Z Zaragoza. So a lot to talk about with that card. A lot of fireworks, but let's jump right into the main event. Uh, you got a new Bantamweight champion. Of course, the Brazilian Warriors continue their hot streak right now. Uh, unlike your boys at Antrim last weekend at UFC uh, 290, we're not going to talk about that because uh, Moreno took the loss. Yair took the loss. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, my girl uh, y Yasmin Hadegui took the loss. All three had a bad night, so um, we love you, Antron, but uh, that was just not a good night for you guys. But Brazilian Stop, man. Warriors, man, they are rolling right now, especially in Luke's Fight League. Um, what did you think of that main event, and what do you think of the brand-new champion, uh, Jose Roar? Yeah, no, it was badass, man. That was uh, one, of a, one of my favorite fights to call up to date. Um, I think it was just an incredible, like, display of grit from Jose Rauda, man. Damn. Five rounds, just, unanimous just, decision, back and forth fight. It was it really was back. In fact, the first two rounds, I thought Jose Rauda was gonna lose the fight. Like I thought he was out on his feet. Any moment now, Peter Rubio's gonna finish them off. He went. Rubio was trying to finish the fight. Could not, man, could not finish the fight. And just Rauda just wanted more, wanted, wanted it more. And he damn, he displayed it, man. And he showed how um you know, that, that difference, man, of who wants it. And he put up a show, man. Came back in the third, blasted the fourth and the fifth. I mean, he was just fire that night. I mean, there was nothing going to stop that kid that day. Yeah, he is one of those guys that's just been, you know, hanging around for a while now. Um, up there, you know, as far as his age and career and stuff, it's nice to see something like that happen to him. You saw the emotion come out after he won the title. Um, of course, the team surrounded him, you know, everybody swarmed him. But uh, it's just a good story. Like, this guy has been fighting for a long time. Not for a long time, but got a late start. And, you know, here he is at this point in his career. Now he's a champion. But it's not easy because he's got some killers knocking on that door. You got uh, coming up in a couple weeks, you got Luis, Luis Pantera fighting. Uh, we talked before about Lazy Boy and some of those guys coming after him. So it's going to be a tough challenge. Who do you think it's the next crack at uh, Roar? Well, not not only Mauricio is another guy that's just a beast there as well uh, with yeah. those right hands and that spectacular win. I think it's going to put him up. I think that's going to be a great fight. I think Mauricio think the hammer gets the next shot. I think the hammer gets it against Jose Raura. I mean, if I mean, if I were to put it together, I mean, two young guys. Uh, well, correction, two up and coming bantamweights, both fighters. Um, you know, Ro Jose Raura is a little bit older. I think. I think he's thirty five. Yeah. Um, and he started his career a, bit, a little bit later and hasn't had like this long, you know, uh, you know, 15, 25 kind of thing. Um, and he's going up against uh, also, a, you know, against Mauricio, the hammer. 
He's also what six and zero or seven and zero, something like six, that. Six and zero, I think. Yeah, both guys, um, you know, with a relatively Mauricio young Alfonso. mixed martial arts career. I think that would be a badass fight. Both of those guys going up because they're both just were, they're just so tough, man. I think that's just going to be a good clash of bantamweights. I think it it would be another exciting matchup. We'll talk about Pantera in a little bit because he's going to be on the next card we're talking about. But him, Lazy Boy, Alfonso, there's it's like. They're going to knock each other off eventually, but it's just kind of crazy the way you have so many killers lined up for Marco Beltran's title that, you know, he left vacant. It just opened up the division completely because he was he was hanging on to it for so long. And now the division is just wide open. It, it really is. And then Pantera kind of brings in a, another interesting element as well. He's had that highlight, you know, um, that highlight real knockout with that spinning back. Uh, okay. Badass, dude. Like, the kid has got so he's much just talent. Running. He's running through everybody right now. So I'm really excited yeah. to see him in a couple of weeks. But we'll get to that. We'll let Jose yeah. Roar enjoy his moment <laughs> before <laughs> we start throwing him in with all these killers. Um, but that said, you know, it's also interesting to see what they'll do with Fido Rubio next because he's challenged for the title a couple times, fell short. So he's kind of left in that challenger role for a while. But he's still a very dangerous fighter. He showed it against Beltran. He showed it this fight, too. You know, former UFC, you know, Dana White contender series type fighter. So, you know, yeah. he's been around for a while. So uh, he'll be he'll hang around for a little bit longer. Um, co-main event, uh, Francisco Babyface Patron uh, against Luis Moraz. Patron got the win after three rounds. Unanimous decision. What do you think of that fight? Well, it, it kind of looks like uh, Patron's kind of looking a little bit more human. Uh, you know, he looked like uh, a superhero at 135 pounds. But now at 45. He's definitely bumping into some some walls here, uh, you know that uh, that he found, and I think Luis Meraz was able to expose some of those uh, ex- in the exchanges and the kind of in the open mat. Uh, I thought I thought Meraz did a really good job with that, uh, but I think you know it was a it was a unanimous decision, but I think it was a lot closer. Uh, I think most people that were watching maybe perhaps had it as a maybe a split. I had it for Patron to win. I think Francisco Hex Rivera, uh, who was also commentating in the fight, had Luis Meraz as a possibility to win that fight. Uh, but no, I think I think Patron took that one. Um, you know, especially after rewatching that fight, uh, really close fight. You know, um, but Patron is still on fire, man. Nonetheless, that guy's still he's ten and one now uh, with uh, a, a great you know a come from behind uh, kind of uh, kind of a situation for him. You never really know how a fighter is going to bounce back from a knockout, right? Like, especially when he was undefeated going into his last fight, got caught by Rivera in the third round and got dropped. Some yeah, and he was getting his butt kicked, though, too. Uh, he, yeah. was getting, he was getting lit up in that fight. But some fighters, their ego, their their pride, their, their mystique, once they get dropped, it's gone. Like, they're not the same fighter. So for him to bounce back against a tough Luis Moraz, Who's you know he's no slouch. He's seven and three now. Like this guy was tough. Seven and two coming into the fight, for him to bounce back and handle that challenge and come back is also a big a good sign for uh, Francisco Patron as well to come back from that knockout. Now he's got back onto a winning path. So it'll be interesting to see. I think he's probably now because coming off that knockout a couple fights ago, I don't really know how deep the 145 pound division is at this point. But I would say he's at least a fight or two away from challenging for the title for that one as well. Yeah, and uh, I think just also to add to that is that he's also coming up from the Brazilian Warriors, and those guys have all have gold now, have all touched uh, Aztec gold with with Luke's fight league, and now with with him, everybody was talking about him getting a getting a championship fight now, uh, getting the winner of uh, I think Rivera, who's going to be fighting for that um, maybe in the near future. Fighting the onion. That turns out. What's that? He's fighting the Onion, uh, Edgar. He's fighting him in uh, at Luke's Fight League 35 in Monterey in August. Yep, exactly. So that's going to be a very, very interesting how that pans out. Um, perhaps it could be a good one. Maybe the return for Patron to get his uh, to get his wits on uh, Rivera. But well, that that will that will uh, only time will tell on that one. Yeah, it's good. He, he look. He's very talented. You know, he ran into a very tough fight. You know, we'll see what happens, but. Uh, that should have been him in that title fight, and it's his own fault that it's not. So, um, Alexandro Jaguar Bravo with uh, a very strong performance against Sealer. 
uh, unanimous decision. Uh, you think Bravo is, I mean, it's still young. He's only four and zero. Uh, you think he's going to be a contender in that flyweight division? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's, uh, he, he showed a, a really good, uh, you know, display of, of being able to mix it well that day. Um, especially that ground pound. yeah, especially with the ground pound. Exactly. And, uh, was able to take the like down and, and, and just control him in that fight. Like to see a matchup with somebody uh, that's coming up in the bantamweight division, uh, and, and see how that pans out. Probably be a really good Luke's challenge kind of uh, fight for him uh, to kind of put him into the mix, and really has to win in spectacular fashion uh, for him to be even in the conversation of the top bantamweights. But nonetheless, a really good performance, I think. Definitely. And then I keep singing her praises. You know, Nina Mita uh, Fernando Munoz with the big win over uh, C. Fuentes. Uh, unanimous decision. I mean, I know we're waiting for Ellie to, Ellie Rodriguez to get healthy again. That's the only reason she didn't have a title fight before. But she's got to be in that title fight next, right? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, she looked great, too. Her stand-up looks really good. Very really cleaned up, too, as well. Uh, I, I really the only one at Antrim that won this weekend, or last week. <laughs> Wait, say it again? So she's the only one at Antrim that won. <laughs> Damn, dude, it was rough. It's rough, man. It's tough. Yeah, uh, she's, she did great. she's fantastic. Like, she's so strong and everywhere you go. You watch her on the ground, on the feet. Like, she's strong everywhere. Um, I don't know what her jiu-jitsu game is like because we've really only seen, like, you know, scrambles on the ground. We haven't seen her go for submissions or anything like that. But, you know, she tries to go for ground and pound. But at the same time, on her feet, she's dangerous striking as well. So it's going to be a really interesting well, fight to see her and Ellie Rodriguez when they finally match up. It, it, it was really cool. And uh, I saw fight five uh i was ringside uh when she fought against nadine uh mandiao she was one of uh manolo hernandez team hurricane awesome's uh you know proteges and she was fighting there in tj back in march of 2002 UWC and i was yeah and i was really really uh impressed by her performance because she was just standing standing and banging with nadine and then when it hit the ground she just completely dominated nadine and nadine's coming from a really good jiu-jitsu team um and uh with like the one time nine she nine actually nine. did go for a submission she got that arm bar and she got that arm bar and it was a sneaky sneaky arm bar dude so it was really good so i know i've seen it and i know she's got some really good talent on the ground as well so uh she's she's definitely uh, one of those flowers that you're gonna have to you know open up and it's gonna blossom very well here you're gonna be seeing that here in the near future look she lost her first two pro fights and then has turned around and won six straight or seven straight so you know she found out what was wrong early on that was that was five years ago when she lost those two fights. She hasn't lost since. So, and you, like you said, she comes from a very good camp in Antrim, you know, with all those professionals and UFC fighters and all the other fighters she's surrounding herself with. So, you know, she's got all the tools to be someone very successful. So, it's very exciting to watch her fight. And like I said, that Ellie Rodriguez fight is going to be special because Ellie's got a lot of talent. Like Ellie's very good too. So, you know, she's not a champ by accident. She she earned that. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh. Speaking of people coming up, we talked about him last time. Raul Zaragoza, big knockout, kind of knocked him out with a jab. <laughs> um, he's now 3-0. and um, God, I, I want to see him and Tarzan go at it. I mean, selfishly, I mean, what do you think of this kid? So uh, it was really interesting. Both these guys – so uh, Raul – well, excuse me, Zaragoza is always – like he always shoots for the legs, right? And he and he gets in these situations where he's getting, his, getting beat up. Um, and he's – He's really good on the ground, and it's worked for him for the last three fights. Uh, I think guys are going to tune up to him here, and uh, he can he can get really punished, man, when he goes for those legs, man. And he almost did. He almost got uh, destroyed by Wong on the ground because of those crazy attempts. Uh, it's really fun to watch. It's really interesting and everything. But, boy, is he playing with fire every time he shoots for that leg. Um, now, as the fight went on, I think the pressure that Saragosa and the pace was just too much for Wong. And it was just kind of, Wong was exhausted. Saragosa was also, was also tired, but he was, uh, but he was just more in, into the fight. So it was, it was uh, a death by, what do they call it? Death by a thousand needles. Is that what this, is that what they call it? I, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Wait, what's, it, what, what's the saying? I was, I was messed up saying. I don't know the saying. It's like death by attrition. I don't, I don't I think you're right with a thousand needles or something like that. This yeah. is one of the things. Look, 
Zaragoza, like Wong's not a world beater. He's one and four now. Like he's kind of there for a reason. It's just let's see how this kid survives another challenge, right? Um, and this is another step in his his journey. You know, hopefully he learned his mistakes. I sure hope he doesn't go for the legs against Tarzan because his long legs, like that's not going to be a good look, especially the way Tarzan can take your back so quickly. Yeah, for, yeah, for exactly. a tall dude, he can get around you real fast. Yeah, um, Sadako says fire, man. He he's really interesting to watch. I think it'd be. I mean, if it's any, power, if he's it's any. Power. If it's any indication, like in terms of, like, speaking, like the jujitsu of Zaragoza could be the Achilles heel for Anwar. So, you know, it's it, you know, but Anwar's got everything else going for him, you know. I mean, so, Anwar's he's got pretty good jujitsu too. I guess what he does, like, exactly. Like, we exactly. tell him, so, to stay, we keep telling Tarzan to like stay distance and use your distance, but he keeps uh, wanting to grab you, <laughs> like, right? Like, right, don't. exactly. So this kid, this is. The, I think stylistically speaking, I think, I, I, yeah, it's 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 an interesting fight to watch. Uh, I, I I think I think Tarzan just we uh, just wins out of uh, just pure uh, 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 athletic ability number one, and then also the cardio man. So there was there was a hole there in Zaragoza's cardio man as he was going for those legs, going one hundred percent, really just as, as as tired as Wong was. But boy, he threw up a highlight knockout reel that's going to live on forever. Um, you know, so congratulations to Saragosa. I think he did uh, 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 a, a tailor-made knockout for fighting like a Mexican. Another, another, hey, another step in his journey. So we'll see what's next. Yes. You know, he's still super young. Um, finishing out the main card, you had Luis or Iron Cabrera get the win over uh, Saved, Saavedra. I always butcher that name. I'm sorry. Saavedra. Saavedra uh, yeah. with a nice second-round knockout. Um, beautiful knockout. Beautiful uh yeah, it's tailor made. It was it was real pretty. Um, and then I'm gonna run through the rest of these results real quick. So we also have time today to talk about Luke's fight week 34 real quick and see if Alex likes any of these highlights. Of course, the Melendez Gomez fight um, the, uh, got canceled. Um, was that just because somebody didn't make weight, or what happened with that fight? Do you know? I think yeah, somebody won. So they just didn't take the fight because uh, they didn't make weight. Uh, your boy Freddie Villegas uh, got the win over Jorge Manzano. A unanimous decision on the challenger card. Uh, Guillermo Vadenes got the win over uh, Mervin uh, Suevas uh, via third Salvador. round knockout. What'd you say? Sal Salvador Cuevas, no? Yeah. Okay. Stop correcting me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what you said. I'm you said something else. That's what I got you here for. I need you, bro. <laughs> you said something else. I don't know. I was like, I don't know what you just said, but all right. I said his real name, Mervin. Um, okay. Uh, he has a first name, believe it or not. I know Luke loves to use all nicknames, but some of these guys got real names. Um, <laughs> Ricardo Hussein versus uh, Alakin uh, Rodriguez got the unanimous decision over him. Uh, one fight we said, like, both guys had a lot to, like, lose and lots of win coming up. Uh, Magic Lopez got the win over uh, Aladrio Guerrero, uh, second round rear naked submission. Um, and then kicking things off, uh, Cort uh, Samuel Cortez got the uh, rear naked submission over Ulysses uh, Cienceros. Um, any of those challenger card fights kind of stick out to you? Uh, yeah, man, I thought the uh, Ricardo Hussein versus Luis Ivan Rodriguez was a good fight. You know, uh, Ricardo got in the win there, moves up 2-0, and takes out a fighter with more experience, uh, somebody that we've seen uh, many times at Luke's Fight League already. And uh, so congratulations to him. He's moved up two wins for Luke's Fight League uh, in the flyweight division. So, you know, it's good, good to see some new blood coming up. Man, some of these names are hard, Alex. You try being on this side sometimes, bro. I ate. I mean, That's you live in you Miami. Friends. I'm surprised. You're, I'm you're, surprised. You're, you're spoiled. You're spoiled. <laughs> you got Francisco on one side. You got me on the other. Man, you're spoiled. You ain't got nothing. That's there. what it is. Yes, I'm spoiled. I'm privileged. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is Luke's Fight League 33. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of that card. Let you know thought of uh, some of those uh, awesome knockouts and performances that we talked about. Uh, but, Alex, before we get out of here, we also have to preview another card because we won't be back until after this card. Uh, you're going down for Luke's Fight League 34 uh, in Cancun. I'm sorry for you. I'm so sorry you have to go down to, to Cancun. No, so um, far. <laughs> to see, our, see one of our favorite guys, uh, Jorge Calvo, defend his new flyweight title that he won last time out against uh, Power Salazano. Uh, you also got Pantera Guerrero on the card, Show Kid uh, Quelia, uh, Alan Dominguez is on that card, Hannah Ramos. Um, just a really fun, exciting card going on. Luke's Fight League 34. Uh, let's preview it real quick. Uh, main event, uh, Jorge Calvo defending his new title against Luis Power Salazano. Uh, how do you see that fight going? 
Man, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that Luis Alorzano Power, dude, is just a badass fighter, dude. He reminds me of a, of a very small Vanderlei Silva with the way he throws those hook shots, man, to the body, to the head. It's fun. It's I love watching it. I love calling the fights because he's always attacking the body like the epitome of fighting like a Mexican, dude, because he's just winging left and right, man. Jorge Calvo, the most clever dude, the most, like, uh, insane, like, has everything uh, in, when it comes to the flyweight division. He's earned his shot at the – well, he sh he's earned the belt. I mean, he's, like, always been the top guy uh, and finally gets that belt. So this will be the first time he gets to defend it, and he's going to defend it against a guy who attacks the body. And we've seen Jorge Calvo get hit in the body already by Alessandro Nono Acosta. That's how he got finished. So it will be a really interesting fight here. Uh, and I think just because of the way Cabo moves and the way he holds his hands up here, he's got to be very careful with those, those body shots, uh, of course. But, man, when it comes to technique, when it comes to going the distance, Jorge Calvo is a man. I think uh, I'm definitely going to go with Cabo on this fight. Well, and it make him very happy that we're both going to be picking him to win this fight because he says we never pick him. So, Jorge, we're picking you. Um, <laughs> All right. But, you know, it's another division, right? Like we talked about it with Aurora and how Beltran vacated the 135-pound division, opened it wide up. Same thing with Nono Costa. Nono Costa was running through that, that flyweight division. He left to go to the UFC. Uh, got a big win, of course. Uh, congratulations to him. But, you know, that division got open wide open. And now a lot of these guys that couldn't get over that, that mountain of Nono Costa, here they are now running this division. And Jorge Calvo is one of those. You know, he's now won three straight fights. Uh, you know, Luis Ivan Rodriguez, Emilio Cuadra, Jesus uh, Gutierrez, you know, um, two of those were, were finishes. Um, he seems to be getting more and more confidence about him. Uh, and, you know, confidence as a fighter is a big deal. And so um, Solorzano has been like going through a couple of decision fights lately. So it's been a while since he's gotten one of his, you know, showcase finishes. So uh, I like uh, Calvo in this one. I think if it goes to the ground, I think it's all Calvo. I think if he gets in any kind of grappling situations, I really like Calvo in this one. Um, but Solozano, you know, power is not just a nickname. The, the guy is dangerous and can finish you. So um, we'll see. As long as Calvo <coughs> stays out of, out of uh, dangerous situations, I think he should win this fight um, and continue his reign. Uh, Co-main event guy we talk a lot about, uh, talk about highlight reels, Luis Pantera Guerrero. Um, another guy not getting any younger, trying to march down and get that title shot at 135 pounds, bantamweight. Um, he's fighting a very tough one, uh, Pegajoso uh, Diaz. Uh, what do you think of that fight? Yeah, Pegajoso or the sticky one, Diaz. Uh, yeah, man, he's he, I mean, he ran through Irvin Amaya. Oh, I said it right this time. You said it. Good job, man. Uh, I guess uh, he he fought back at uh, let's see. So he's been very active April, February, so of 2022, uh, and then this year, of course, and back in February. And uh, he's just been putting up a good, a good fight here. Something really interesting here, um, in terms of the bantamweight status. This is a, this is a good fight to have. Um, you know, of course, we're also including that he's, you know, he's from Argentina, and we're talking about the Hammer as well. He, uh, I think the Hammer is he from? No, he's not from Argentina, but uh, Rivera is at 145 pounds. So um, it's just a, a good a good uh, a good analysis here for for Diaz and in, in taking on this fight. I think it's going to be a really good matchup. Like and ten and two score. versus eight and one, right? Something's got to give. Yeah, something exactly. Uh, I think Guerrero is just one of those guys that's super tough. One of the stronger guys in the division at 135 pounds. I you know it, it's it's hard to see how this is going to uh, you know how it's going to pan out. This is a really tough one to call. I think. Uh, but if I were to if I were to guess here or uh, put my my efforts forward, we'll probably be against against. Uh, I think Guerrero takes this fight. No doubt. I think I think Guerrero's the more look. First of all, the, Juan Diaz is super young, twenty five years old. You know, super young. Um, Guerrero's thirty four. He knows he doesn't have a lot of time, especially in those lighter weight divisions. And I think Guerrero is driven. I think he wants it. I think you know at this point, I don't think anything's standing in his way. So. I think Diaz has a bright future, but I think right now I think this is Guerrero's time, and I think this is going to be a really great matchup. Um, I think the matchmakers did a great job on this one because I didn't I didn't think of Diaz as somebody Guerrero should face. You know, we've been talking about Lazy Boy. We've been talking about uh, Mauricio Alfonso. 
Like those, we're talking about title contenders at this point. You know, Diaz. You know, that's a good find, and that's going. This going to be a fun matchup. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, speaking of fun matchups, I don't think I've ever seen a fight where Emilio Showkid uh, Quellyard didn't live up to his nickname of Showkid. Uh, he goes out either on his shield or performs a highlight. Like it's one or the other. Like it's not much in the middle of like these boring decisions. Like he's going. He just the kid doesn't stop. He takes that mullet with him everywhere he goes. Straight ahead. <laughs> he does. Um, and then he's got five and one David Perez. What do you think of this one? Yeah, I mean, this will be he'll be welcoming this kid coming uh from uh Nica uh what is it, Nicaragua, I believe. And he's uh, you know, be the first time welcoming a guy, and that's always kind of a nerve wreck, right? You gotta defend the, your territory. Uh you got your spot. And so here's an opportunity for um for this for this kid from Nicaragua to come over and uh, earn his spot at Luke's Fight League and and get called into the you know the you know the top spot for the bantamweight division so um man this is a tough one not a lot that i know about this kid you know he's got some fights he's coming off of a three fight uh win streak uh i guess got became pro back in 2020 um and all the fights have been i guess like uh you know out of the country so uh, not a lot not a lot really uh, here to to really guess how this would definitely be one of his, his challenges. You know, you see somebody with a good record. Sometimes you don't really know because you don't know who they fought, right? Yeah, um, exactly. So this is him on a big stage. We'll see if the record stands up to the fighter. And, you know, we'll see. Well, you know, Quellyar, Quellyar, like, took the champ to a split decision, like, before Calva won the belt. Like, they fought, and it was a split decision. Like, he last. Yep. He took Luis Yvonne Rodriguez to a decision, despite, look, Luis Yvonne Rodriguez was punishing him, like, literally beating the crap out of Show Kid. And... He hung in there. He just would yeah. not quit. There is no quit in this guy. So he's going to yeah. give David Perez all the challenge he can want. Um, and and he's not let's not forget, he's, he's got some wins over Luis Gallegos, you know, back at uh, Luke's 12, which is huge. You know, Luis Gallegos is still, like, in the mix here with the bantamweights. And he's got to, you know, he's been around the block with these guys. And uh, so I think it'll be very interesting to see how that comes out. Don't worry, Alex. I'll let you get back to your life soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got I to gotta head back soon. So, All right, we're going to breeze through some of these other previews and get out of here. Um, of course, Alan Dominguez back in action uh, at 170 pounds against uh, Gonzalez. You have Walter Reyes and Alejandro Corrales at 145 pounds matching up. Anna Ramos, somebody we talked about a lot. She's going against Mon Batiste at 115 pounds. Um, over on that challenger card, you have uh, – Mimo Torres versus Beto Garcia. Uh, you have Jesus Mantis Martinez versus, first of all, he's going against Pasha Rodriguez. How the hell is Pasha Rodriguez even fighting? Didn't he like damn near break his foot like a month ago? <laughs> yes, I don't know, man. He's going to throw his leg like, at him. Like literally, like he's out of his mind and, and, and in a fun, good way. Like, I don't like, I mean, he does look like, like a really psycho sometimes, but like. He, yeah, he does, man. That's, that's an he, ass warrior right there. I heard he's the friendliest person in the world. But, you know, he has the look, and he does not quit. He's crazy. Um, and then also, uh, Rifle Ortega versus Efren uh, Hernandez. Uh, Ulysses Lopez versus uh, Enrique Lara. Uh, and then you got Isaac Amaya and Juan Zuniga finishing up the card. Out of those uh, fights I mentioned, any of those kind of stand out to you? Something that we really should, like, pay attention to? Yeah, Carlos Rivero making his featherweight return uh, against Alejandro Corrales. I think that's a really interesting fat matchup. I, I, I like to see that Neil move forward as well. Uh, we saw, uh, uh, of course, Corrales fight back at Luke's 30 and 24 against Ernesto Galan and Jefferson Vargas Mora. So this kid's got uh, some really – he's coming up for a win there. I think that's going to be a good one. Carlos Rivera's 15 wins, uh, 15 and 7. That dude's been around as well. We saw him fight against Walter Ray. He's got a win, huge win there back at Luke's 31. And then again, back at Luke's 21 against Martinez Brito. So, I mean, uh, the, and this kid fights, man. He's been on an on and off kind of thing. But he's been, you know, he's fought Carlos Uribe. He's fought, uh, you know, Uriel Cosillo, of course. And so this kid's just been, you know, half fist, we'll, we'll fight. So uh, I, I like to follow guys when they're, they're coming in. So keep an eye on that, on that featherweight fight. What do you think about Alan Dominguez? You know, he's like the long stay in the division, like, you know, He's always around. He'll win a couple fights or lose a fight. Win a couple fights, lose a fight. 
Um, he's currently coming off a loss, split decision loss to Suarez back in Luke's 30. What do you think of this matchup with Martin Gonzalez? Do you think this is a matchup for him to get get right at 170 pounds? Yeah, dude, that dude. Hey, what, dude, what what dude do you think he should be in? Because he bounces around. Yeah, I think uh, the 155 is probably his best. Um, excuse me, the, the, yeah, well, the welterweight class is the one that's the best one. Um, yeah, Alan Dominguez bounced around a bunch of different divisions, like, you know, probably more naturally 170, you know, so we'll, we'll see. They don't have a lot of challengers. Obviously, Tarzan, we just talked about uh, Raul. So a lot of people that could be up and coming, but not his experience level anyway. Um, so that's interesting as well. Um, but, yeah, all that action taking place down in Cancun uh, a couple weeks from now, uh, July 21st, I believe. Uh, yeah, July 21st, Cancun. So check out. Pay attention to that. Uh, any final words before we get out of here today, Alex? Looking for – give you a ring when I'm in Cancun. All right. Um, just to, just will you, to say will hi. you do that for me? <laughs> when I'm sipping a Mai Tai right on the beach. And so Bro, uh, you dude. can't talk trash to either one of us. We both live in paradise on different coasts. That's true. That's a good point. That's a good like point. You, but you I'll be at a different paradise. Diego. Yeah. That's my life. You live in San Diego. I live in Tampa. Like, <laughs> who are you talking to? Come on. It's Here currently 90 degrees and sunny outside. Actually, it's a little cloudy right now. But, you know, we, we get rain. You don't. We're it's spoiled. We're spoiled. You got bugs. I heard how you got bugs over there. We do have a lot of them, but we also have like nine months of the year that are probably the perfect, most perfect weather in the world. So that's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Same, same with San Diego. Yeah. So you do, you're doing all right. Cancun's just a, like you said, a different paradise. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> that is Crossing Borders episode number 41. I'm Mike Ginn. That's Extremo Alex Soto. We'll be back to you probably in about two or three weeks. Uh, we'll be we'll be back the week after. So if that's the 21st, whatever the Wednesday is after that, Thursday after that, uh, we will be back for that show to recap it. Um, all right. We're out.